Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Tanner Cook? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing you by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the alleged crime, then offer my analysis. This case takes place in 2023 in Loudoun County, Virginia, which is an extremely wealthy area just west of Washington, D.C. It is essentially a suburb of Washington. The county has the highest median household income in the United States, $147,000 a year. This case involves a 21-year-old social media content creator named Tanner Cook, who posts on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. He refers to his YouTube channel as, quote, classified goons, unquote. At the time making this video, the channel has over 41,000 subscribers and has been viewed almost 2 million times. The channel comprises videos that feature Tanner, and sometimes his friends, playing pranks on people in public places. Many of the videos are recorded in retail stores. I will provide a more detailed description of his channel in my analysis. Now moving to the timeline of the alleged crime. On April 2, 2023, Tanner was in the Dulles Town Center. This is a mall located in the town of Sterling, Virginia, not far from the Potomac River. Tanner was in the food court playing some type of prank involving a translation app. I can only imagine that this involved him using unpleasant language, annoying people, or something like that, but the details about what he was doing have not been released. A 31-year-old man named Alan W. Colley was also in the food court. Tanner was engaging Alan somehow in this prank, like Tanner was speaking to him. Not long before noon, Alan produced a firearm and shot Tanner in the abdomen. The police received a call reporting the shooting at 11.57 a.m. They arrived three minutes later and found Alan in the food court near a pistol. They placed Alan under arrest. Tanner was found just outside the mall with a gunshot wound. He was taken to a local hospital. The bullet pierced his stomach and liver. He had surgery and went to intensive care. His father later indicated that he and his family were confident that Tanner would make a full recovery. Alan was charged with aggravated malicious wounding, shooting in the commission of a felony, and discharging a firearm within an occupied building. He is facing 20 years to life in prison for the aggravated malicious wounding charge alone. He was held without bond. The police said that it does not appear as though Tanner and Allen knew each other. The criminal complaint does not specify a motive. It only said that the attack resulted from an interaction between Tanner and Allen. Tanner was interviewed in the hospital. He explained the interaction by saying, quote, I was playing a prank and a simple practical joke and this guy didn't take it very well. Tanner further stated that the shooter didn't say anything to him. One of Tanner's friends recorded the incident on video. It was turned over to the police as evidence. Tanner's father also talked to the media about the incident. Referring to Tanner, he said, quote, He has a YouTube channel, and he goes to malls, and he tries to have fun and do goofy stuff and try to get people to laugh to watch his videos. Unquote. Referring to the perpetrator, Tanner's father continued by saying, quote, This guy wasn't laughing, he wasn't having a fun time, and decided to shoot my son because he was offended. It's too bad people today seem to take getting offended too far. Unquote. In another statement, Tanner's father mentioned that there was a phone around the perpetrator and they were interviewing or talking to him. This supports this theory that Tanner was engaging Allen somehow while they were in the food court. Tanner's father referred to Tanner as a good kid, but conceded that some people could view his son's behavior as a form of harassment. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, the alleged shooter, Alan Coley, lives in Leesburg, Virginia, but was originally from Fairfax. He graduated from Loudoun County High School and worked as a DoorDash delivery driver, although now he's permanently banned from the company 
probably because of the shooting part. In 2012, Allen's father accused him of punching him twice in the head. Allen allegedly told the police that he had become angry for a few minutes and was unsure of what happened. Allen was charged with assault, but the case was dismissed in 2014. Item number two, I think it's reasonable to believe, based on the evidence available so far, that Tanner's behavior somehow contributed to the negative outcome. Like perhaps he aggravated and provoked Allen, the alleged shooter appeared to be the target of Tanner's prank or practical joke. This theory about Tanner aggravating someone is consistent with the many videos he's released on social media. This brings me to item number three. As I mentioned, Tanner has a YouTube channel where he uploads videos featuring pranks. Most of his videos are around 10 minutes long. They feature Tanner, and sometimes a friend, being recorded by a cameraman who attempts to remain hidden. Tanner goes to public places and bothers people with pranks. The sound quality in his videos is awful, but not bad enough. Unfortunately, Tanner's voice is still technically audible much of the time. Here are a few examples of video titles that sum up his channel pretty well. Stealing beds from mattress store prank. Firing employees at stores I don't work at. Barking in people's ears prank. Asking workers to help me steal prank. Angry guy charges cameraman. And deliberately filming in people's faces prank. To get a better idea of what Tanner was doing with his pranks, I watched four of his videos. This was as many as I could watch without risking brain damage. Here are summaries of the four videos I sampled. Video one is titled, Taking People's Groceries Prank. This video starts with Tanner harassing a security guard at what appears to be a mall. Tanner claimed that a person was recording him. It's clear the person recording him is Tanner's friend. Tanner hugs the security guard and otherwise crosses boundaries during the interaction. At one point, Tanner runs after the friend who is carrying the camera, acting like he's going to attack him. The security guard is trying to calm the situation down. Tanner and his friend just run out of the mall. The second part takes place in retail stores. Tanner harasses three different people. At a self-checkout, he grabbed an item that a man was trying to buy. Tanner accuses someone else of stealing his groceries. And at the end of the video, Tanner harasses a random employee for a few minutes. Video two is titled Fake Mall Security Prank. Here Tanner, and presumably a friend of his, can be seen posing as security guards and harassing a variety of people. For example, Tanner asks one man if he had marijuana on him and then pretends to write him a citation. He told another man that he could not use a laptop in the mall. Tanner's friend harassed an employee who was kind of figuring out that they were not real security guards. And at the end of the video, Tanner harasses more people who are peacefully sitting down and accuses others of having marijuana. Video three is titled, Accusing People of Stealing Prank. Here again, we see Tanner pretending to be a security guard. One after the other, he harasses innocent people in stores by accusing them of stealing. At one point, Tanner walks back into the employee-only section of a store and tells an employee that he saw someone stealing. Some of the people get pretty upset, which is understandable. A few are suspicious of Tanner, but they largely comply with his commands. Video four is titled Clown vs. Cops. Here we see that Tanner and his friend appear to be clowns. I would say that they were dressed up as clowns, but one could argue that being clowns is their natural state. This is what they look like when they're not dressed up as normal people. Either way, Tanner and his friend go into a Walmart store. They use a scooter to ride around in circles, which aggravates employees and shoppers. The police are called. They confront the clowns and their camera person and remove them from the store. The clowns are then seen in another store harassing innocent people. This time the police arrived and handcuffed them, but it's not clear what happened. The clowns go on to get kicked out of a Target store before finally aggravating people in a grocery store. Considering the content of the four videos I watched, it's clear what Tanner's strategy is. He harasses innocent people in retail environments and other public places until he is forced to leave. Item number four. Considering Tanner's behavior, I'm amazed that he has not been the target of violence prior to the April 2023 shooting. 
His videos have zero humor value. Rather, he just causes a lot of stress for people who are minding their own business. Tanner puts himself and others in danger, especially when he dresses up as a security guard and accuses people of committing crimes. I don't know if he's ever been the target of civil litigation, but there is this sense that he's really taking his chances. There are a few potential grounds for lawsuits that could come up for his behavior, including intentional infliction of emotional distress, defamation, false imprisonment, and trespassing. If an actual security guard from a store falsely accused a customer of stealing, that could result in a lawsuit. Just because Tanner is a fake security guard does not protect him. Tanner appears to be teetering on the edge of financial destruction in every video, and he is not making anyone happy. Which brings me to item number five. In light of Tanner's behavior, it's easier to understand what may have happened between him and the man who shot him. Shooting a person under those circumstances is never acceptable, but Allen certainly has a lot of room to mount a defense to avoid being convicted of the most serious charge. For example, his defense team could play all of Tanner's videos, which feature Tanner aggravating innocent people for absolutely no reason. It doesn't fully excuse Allen's alleged actions, but it may cause the jury to think twice about convicting him. It's not hard to imagine a situation where Allen is convicted of a lesser offense because of the provocation. The only problem with playing the videos in court is that the jury would be terrorized. They would have to sit through all of Tanner's videos. Whatever Allen's sentence may be would pale in comparison to what the jury would have to suffer through. Item number six, what are the personality characteristics associated with those who play pranks? Here I'm talking in general terms, not about any specific prankster. In the research, pranking behavior is often associated with other behaviors like online trolling and bullying. One noticeable characteristic with these behaviors is sadism, which is part of the dark tetrad, narcissism, psychopathy, Machiavellianism, and sadism. Sadism is elevated in pranksters. Some researchers believe it is caused by displaced aggression. The prankster has vulnerable narcissism. They are self-centered, vindictive, insecure, and want to get revenge on society. Unable to confront whoever they are actually angry with, they target innocent people. For a prankster, causing harm to others creates excitement, satisfaction, arousal, and pleasure. They gain a sense of superiority by elevating themselves above their targets. A potential personality profile for a prankster would be mid-range openness to experience, low conscientiousness, high extroversion, low agreeableness, and high neuroticism. For the pranksters who promote their behavior to a wide audience, this may be a pathetic attempt to earn the approval of their peers. They are desperate for attention and acceptance, but they don't have any legitimate skill to offer. Therefore, they turn to sadistic behavior. Item number seven, it doesn't appear as though Tanner has learned his lesson. From the hospital, he told the media that he will continue making videos. It is his life's passion. He seems to have a lack of insight. He doesn't really understand that he's provoking people to violence. His method of making a living is not sustainable. At best, he is going to be banned from just about every retail store that he visits and potentially find himself involved in lawsuits. At worst, he's going to aggravate someone who shoots more accurately. Tanner would be wise to select a more pro-social career. With his determination, lack of insight, and absence of shame, I'm sure he can find a safer way to irritate people. Those are my thoughts on the case of Tanner Cook. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.